Uh, you know what? I suppose that, that um, this has been asked a thousand times, if not more, at least in my own family, uh, this time of the year, all over the country, the question will arise once again, and we did it with our kids as they were little all the way. We still do it. We'll do it this Thursday as we gather around a table together. But we'll, we'll look right in their eyes and we'll say, what are you thankful for? I bet you've never done that, have you? Just, it's funny. Uh, we don't just do it only on Thanksgiving uh, Thursday, but, but we've done it other times. But, but especially on Thanksgiving Day as the table's set, uh, you know, and, and all the different ideas especially when the kids are very young start coming in and they, they might say something like toys or friends or you know just the the stuff of life the stuff that that is on their minds at that moment and then we quickly move to the more foundational things they're thankful for family thankful for our grandparents for the, our, our lives our homes they were always thankful for our, our home that we were able to live in thankful for the the amazing meal that uh, that uh, mom cooks and and uh it, I, do, I do a lot of cooking, but she does that one. She's gotten really good at that one. They'll be thankful for the pumpkin pie. I can't figure out people that aren't thankful for pumpkin pie. And there's people that don't like pumpkin pie, but I really like it, <laughs> at least the way that Lynn makes it. And so if you don't like it, you haven't had Lynn's pumpkin pie yet. Of course, we're thankful for one another and our good brother and our sisters sometimes, right? Uh, depending on how they're picking on us. And then they move on to, for a loving mom and a dad, of course, in our lives, our lives in Christ. That's always uh, been one that pops up at that time. For, for we know that it's by the hand of God that all blessings were made possible. We've grown up that way. That's what we've taught our kids, that every good and, gift comes, uh, good and perfect gift comes from above. And during the time in the life for our children, their growing up years, sometimes it was about their clothes and toys and bikes and Barbies and all that were just really important to them. But, but the conversation would quickly move to what is of utmost important. What is the, the, the bedrock of most important? What are we most thankful for? And it would move to salvation and our faith in Jesus and the benefits that come with being a follower of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that there are benefits that come by being a follower of Jesus Christ? There's, there's many these days that think, well, uh, who are you to think that you're more blessed? And so I, I, don't, I, I don't, but I do know that every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from the one who wants to bless my life. Even when things aren't perfect, I am blessed. And God is good. And so for a moment in our year, yes, we are thankful for this land, for the sacrifices of so many that worked hard to settle this land, the challenges and losses of many that, that wanted a life that was free from oppressiveness. We still want that, you know that? We, we still want to be free from, from oppressiveness. Uh, certainly we were thankful for such things, but, but now our attention was upon our Lord as we sat around that table. We find it in the words to the doxology that say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And then we'd always say, amen. The psalmist said it this way. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, none of his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. That's a benefit. Who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Could we all use a little of that? <laughs> yes, it's... it's special time of the year when the day of thanks is observed you you can just feel the anticipation building as we prepare for the day but but maybe some today maybe you might be saying I, I don't know if I'm feeling that way not not exactly some may be thinking just what what exactly oh yeah I know some of those things but what exactly do I have to be thankful for I mean school's at home work's at home the the world's shutting down all over again we're not supposed to have more than two or three families at Thanksgiving dinner Y'all, if you know where I live, come on over. 
we're going to have a 24 pound turkey and there'll be lots to go around and I, I don't mean to make light of it but, it but it's just heavy all this stuff that's going on in our lives we're not supposed to do a, a whole lot of things the whole world's obsessed with the, the, the disease and many are depressed and some businesses are going under and others are flourishing. We don't know who's going to be president. There's lawsuits, storms, illness. It list goes on and on in the world that we live. I mean, hey, at least the pilgrims, they had a reason uh, to offer thanks to God. But, but today, it, it might be tough in a self-centered world, a selfish world to be thankful, not especially for, for some. Uh, as one person ruminated, he said, for many of us, Thanksgiving doesn't come naturally. It doesn't seem obvious why we should be saying thank you to God. There are some, whether we admit it or not, they're like, uh, I don't usually use him as a reference, but Bart Simpson. In one episode of The Simpsons, young Bart sits down with his family to a meal, and when it's his turn to pray and give thanks, he says something to this effect. He says, Lord, my dad earned the money to pay for this food. My mom worked hard hours to cook it. What'd you do? He goes on to say, thanks for nothing. That's harsh. And he's only a cartoon character, but he, he says sometimes what some are tempted to, to think Today we might be a little more hard-pressed than usual to make out our list of what we're thankful for. It's just easier when things are going really well, when things are kind of perfect in our world, seem perfect in our world. Thanksgiving Day is a very special holiday, though. For, for this particular holiday, we do not celebrate any of the great victories in battle, neither do we honor a great person necessarily who sacrificed himself for others. It, it's a day when we thank God for the blessings that we as a nation, as a people, enjoy together. And this coming Thursday's holiday, it goes back to 1621. I went back and read the story again. I just, it's been a long time since I read the Pilgrim story. I just kind of read through that. Pilgrims there in the east, they, they thank God for the modest harvest that helped them make it through a very hard and challenging time in their journey in a quest for religious freedom very different than that of a cartoon character the pilgrims they they gave thanks to God during a time when it was hard half of them didn't make it through that winter and they gave thanks to God for they knew that it was by his hand of provision that kept them sustained I'll never forget as a teenager one of the first movies I ever went to. I grew up during a time where they didn't like us to go to movies. <laughs> and I remember the first one I went to, I was a teenager. And, and it's no plug for the movie. Uh, there's not many that really can't be plugged today. But I, I probably just remember it because it was the first one that I ever attended. And the movie, it was called The End. And I've mentioned it before, but it was, it was a comedy of sorts. And the, the, the main character was Burt Reynolds. So you know what time I grew up in, right? It, it was a comedy of sorts. And the, the main character, he finds himself, uh, he finds out from a physician that he's dying uh, from something. And, and he tries to find non-painful ways of killing himself because he doesn't want to die from a, a painful disease. And, and in a climactic scene towards the end of the movie, uh, Bert's character, he stands on the beach front looking at the ocean and he decides to swim, to swim out into the ocean and then, and then drown. It's, he just seems like that would be an easier way to go for him. So, so he swims and he swims and he finally makes it uh, to a point of exhaustion. He takes a big breath and he goes under the water and while he's down under the water looking up, seeing the light rays come through the water, he has kind of an epiphany of sorts. He, he, he decides something. He decides I want to live. He's way down underwater, way out from the shore, can barely see the, 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 the shore. And he decides, I want to live. And he comes flying up out of the water yelling, I want to live, I want to live. And, but now he notices that he's that far from, from the shore. And he's not sure that he'll make it. And, and this is where it gets kind of interesting when you think about Thanksgiving and and what we are to be thankful for. He begins to swim. He, he starts praying. Lord, help me. <laughs> Lord, help me. I, I don't think I can make it. If you'll help me, I'll be a better father. He says, I'll obey all ten of the commandments. And he names like one or two of them. 
And then he stops and he says, I promise I'll learn all of the commandments and I'll obey them. And he says, Lord, if you'll help me, I'll see my parents more often. I'll give 50% of my income. 50%, he says, nobody, nobody gives 50%. He says, I'm talking gross, Lord. And as he gets closer to the shore, his epiphany begins to change a bit. He says, no more cheating in business once I get rid of that nine acres out in the desert. And then he continues, I'm going to start donating 10% right away. Lord, he, he says, I know I said 50%, Lord, but 10% to start. And then he says, if you don't want your 10%, then don't take it. And as he gets closer to the beach, he says, I know I was, I know it was you that saved me, but it was also you that made me sick. And from grateful to ingrateful, within a few hundred feet of swimming. It sounds silly, I know, but, but how often do we go from grateful to ingrateful as our circumstances change in life? You see, even in Scripture, the psalmist, the psalmist found it important to correct the ingratitude found amongst his own people, and he writes it this way. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Forget not all his benefits. You see, only those who pause long enough to remember can truly be grateful. It's one of the good things about Thanksgiving Day. If we don't think about it very often, we, we have that, one, that day that repositions us to be a thankful and grateful people. And this Thursday, we will all pause just long enough to remember not just the good things that are part of life, but how good God is to us that in all things, in all things, we can be thankful. The words from the psalmist are not negative, but they're a good word. Good words for all of us who at times lose track of our blessings in the very challenging days that we find ourselves immersed in. Encouraging words for we who sometimes miss the daily grace and blessing in the breaking of bread together in the hands that have helped us, the, the roofs that shelter us. Great words for us who forget that, that all, everything is a gift from God. The word says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived, my, my beloved de brethren. Every good thing, even every good thing given and every perfect gift, gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. You see, developing and maintaining a heart that is grateful, that is in constant thanksgiving, even while enduring trials and difficult times is a great challenge for many of us, if not all of us. But it is definitely worth the effort. You see, gratefulness is an inside job, not an outside job. Gratefulness starts from within and then comes outside. Often we'll, we'll point to why we're not feeling very thankful, pointing to many places when the reality of our challenge emanates from one place. There's a story of a patient. He went to his doctor and he said, Doctor, I've got these pains. And the doctor asked him, Show me, to indicate where they're, they're hurting you. And he began to point at his leg and then he, he, he pointed at his back and then his side and then finally to his head. And he said, Every time I press on these places, it hurts. And after careful examination, the, phys the physician diagnosed the problem. He says, You have a broken finger. A broken finger. You see, we often point to many things that we're not happy with in life, and when our real challenge is the one thing that is broken inside, thankfulness starts from an inner place. The question is, where does our thankfulness come from? Our, uh, is our thankfulness an inside job, or is it an outside job today? We read from our text this morning, it's a text that six or eight of our churches all over Tehachapi this morning are preaching from our pastors we had gotten together about a month ago and we thought this would be a great time for us all to, to, to bring the same text uh, in different expressions throughout the city and so six or eight different churches today are bringing the word from 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 18 and if you'd like to turn there this morning or watch your screen or use your devices 1 Thessalonians 5, 
12 through 18. It says this, But we ask you, brothers and sisters, to recognize those who diligently labor among you and are in leadership over you in the Lord and give you instruction and that you regard them very highly in love, in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. We urge you, brothers and sisters, admonish the unruly, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak be uh, help the weak and be patient with everyone. See that no one repays another with evil for evil. But always seek what is good for one another and for our pe- for all people. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. This is God's word for God's people and we like to say thanks be to God. Father, thank you for your word. Bless it. Help us to see our lives through the lens of your word today. May we be a people who are in all things thankful in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, let me just share a a few ways in which we can find this inside job of thankfulness, the inside. First, our focus is on the presence of God. Our, Our focus is on the presence of God. That's one thing that worship helps us with as we sing praises to God and we enter his courts with thanksgiving and, and, and we, we give him thanks and praise and it sets our hearts in the right position to receive his word. You see, when we complain about or have ingratitude for life, we are in direct contradiction with our God-given nature, what God has, has given to us. We are in Christ. We, we have been given a new outlook that is not incumbent upon our temporal circumstances. That's challenging, but it's true. The psalmist cries out correctly, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You see, his focus is not on all that hurts, his leg and his back and his side and and his head. No, no, his focus is on the Father, the Lord of all things, and we are instructed to forget not all of his benefits. We must focus, we must focus on God's presence in our lives Jesus himself models this for us. In in his darkest of hours, the word says that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus, he broke bread. And what did he do? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. Not a curse, but a blessing. In one of the hardest moments of his life, we find Jesus serving and loving and sharing and giving thanks. Max Lucado tells a story about a boy named Paul who grew up in West Texas. You ever been to West Texas? You ever been in a storm in West Texas? It rains mud balls. <laughs> it just smears on your windshield. And they're violent. They're, they, they, they blow in like I've never seen before. And uh, one day a, spring day, a spring day in West Texas, a tornado touched down near Paul's home. He was only three or four at the time. And at first hint of trouble, his father, he grabbed all the family put them downstairs and covered them with a mattress. We did that two, maybe three times while we lived in uh, Topeka. Take them down. We didn't have a full-blown basement. It was a split level. We'd take them down to the lowest level and put either uh, cushions on them or a a bed. (laughs) Just lay a bed over them. When the sirens are going off, and that means they've seen a tornado, it's touched down. And that's what he was going through. His father explained that They would be safe there, but as they waited out the tornado, Paul realized that his father had not climbed under the mattress with them. Paul peeked out and discovered that his dad was standing at the window watching the funnel cloud as it turned and twisted across the prairie. Not supposed to do that either. Not supposed to stand at your window, but but we did. We did all the time. We'd stand there and, and try and see where it's coming from. And when Paul saw his father by the window, he crawled out from under the mattress and he ran over and he wrapped his arms around his father's leg. Years later, Paul recalled the day that, and he said this about it, he said, something told me that the safest place to stand in a storm was next to my father. Right next to my father. You see, the the pilgrims, they knew the safest place to stand while experiencing their tremendous challenge what that was, right in the presence of God. They would have known that the psalmist was encouraging them to trust God, but unlike Burt Reynolds in that that movie, The End, the the pilgrims, they kept their promise and they returned thanks to God. This was as important as the food on their table. It kept their souls refreshed and full of joy. And this is why Paul 
could write in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 and 18, he says, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This truly is the best place for Thanksgiving. You see, gratitude is a, it's a natural inside outcome for the followers of Jesus. It's an inside job for those that stay close to the Father. When our focus is on the presence of God in our lives, we will in all things be grateful. And not only is our focus on the presence of God, but number two, we pass on God's blessings. We, we pass them on. You see, since, since we have been so blessed, we are to pass on what God has done for us, even, even upon our, our enemies. Think about that. When even in the day that we are living where there's so much hostility towards Christianity or Christians, Luke 6, 35 through 38 says, but love your enemies, do good to them, and, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. You know how I know that he's kind to the ungrateful and the wicked I've been ungrateful and wicked in my life and he changed my life verse 36 says be merciful just as our father is merciful do not judge and you will not be judged do not condemn and you will not be condemned forgive he says and you will be forgiven give in 38 give and it will be given to you will be poured out uh, pr good measure pressed down shaken together running over and poured into your lap for with this measure you use with the measure you use it will be measured to you you see as we give we pass on what God has given to us his, his great blessings just yesterday we had the opportunity to take that which this community of faith has had been given for over about a month or so and, and we passed we passed on God's blessings. We as a faith community took some of our blessings, our monetary blessings, and we gave it away. And, and yesterday, 38 or 39 people received $50 or, or, or so uh, gift cards to uh, Albertsons. And we have like eight more. We might even make it to 50 this year. Passing on the blessings of God to others. I, I'm thankful and grateful to God to be a part of a church. <laughs> that gives and gives and gives even more. You see, Thanksgiving reminds us of our interdependence one with another. We, we have great need for each other. No one is an island unto himself or herself. We need one another. The, the people that first celebrated a time of Thanksgiving were people who had to struggle just to stay alive. And when they landed on that coast and be, began that very long and difficult winter, they had an extremely tough time where over half of them didn't survive that year. And when they celebrated the first Thanksgiving, they had almost nothing, and yet they gave thanks and celebrated as if they had everything. We in our culture today, we have so much to be thankful for, so much more than what we have to gripe about. I know it's true for me. You see, giving thanks was never meant for just one day of the year. Thanksgiving is about thanks living. It's a spirit that we should have more than just one day. Thanksgiving is an inside job with an outside result in our lives. It's something that we should live out all throughout our Christian life and daily. Paul, he gives us in our text some advice as to how we go about our faithful duties. He tells us to do this. He tells us, appreciate and esteem in love. We told our kids from the very time that they could understand, we'd say, this is our motto, expect nothing and appreciate anything. Expect nothing and appreciate anything. Appreciate and esteem in love. And then he says, live in peace. And yes, he says, admonish the unruly. Uh, the Greek word there is ataktos, unruly, those that slack in their duties. He says, admonish them, spur them on to productivity. All the way up until the Lord's return, 
And we can see this idea in chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. He says, and to make it your ambition, he says, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and to attend to your own business and work with your hands. There were some that, that just stopped working. They felt the perusia of the Lord. It was imminent. It was coming. He was coming again, so they just stopped doing anything. And he admonishes them to keep working with your hands just as we commanded you so that you will behave properly toward outsiders and not be in any need, not become a burden on others for lack of doing work. We are also to encourage the faint-hearted, those that feel inadequate or discouraged, or to encourage, not, not discourage. We're to help the weak. Those that need care for their souls, they, 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 they're struggling and they need to be lifted and encourage to help the weak, to be patient with all men. This is certainly something uh, toward Christian to Christian, but it would no doubt spill over into a non-Christian community and would rightly lead into that next idea that says not to repay evil for evil. Matthew 5, 43 and 44 says it like this. You have heard that it is said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Pray for those who persecute you. That can be a challenge. Luke 6, 27 through 29 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Whoever hits you on the cheek, offer him the other also. And whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt from him either. You see, Paul... He's offering here an alternative Christian response to retaliation. We say, oh, I don't want to do that. And when I say I don't want to do that, sometimes the Lord will bring back, sometimes you feel like honking your horn. <laughs> you, ever, you ever stop just short of the honk? It's like, no, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Not in the wrong not in the wrong spirit. Sometimes it's like it's just like the me, 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 me. It's the one that says, hey, stop looking at your phone. It's time to go. Me, 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 me. And sometimes like. <laughs> it's an alternative Christian response to retaliation. It, it, it is to seek after the good for everyone and for all. It is to strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Luke 6.31 tells us, treat others the same way you want them to treat you. You see, worship is about being open to God at every moment. We, we are to rejoice always and to pray without ceasing. Joy is both a gift from the Spirit and a response to the Spirit, the Son and the Father for the loving embrace that sweeps us into the kingdom of God. John 15, 11 says, these things I've spoken to you so that my joy, he says that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. And Galatians 5, says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness. We are, we are to be a people that rejoice always and pray without ceasing, that we should pray and not give up. This last Sunday, about a week ago now, a very good friend of mine, he was doing some yard work and he ended up on the ground. His heart stopped. He had to have compressions and they had to shock his heart back. It's as if for a moment he was peeking over into the next life. Moments seemed like hours for his dear wife. And Lynn and I, we passed the ambulance on the way to his house. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed without ceasing, praying and not giving up. I pleaded with God, don't take my friend, not yet, Lord, not now. Obviously, your will be done, but not now, Lord. Luke 18, 1 says, Jesus was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. And we as believers should strive to pray at every opportunity. By, by the way, God is good and he is faithful and his mercy endures forever. And my friend and yours, if you know him, Ray, he made it. He's home. He, he came up to the church this week to visit me a week 
not even a week after this had all happened to him. And I just say, thanks be to God. What a merciful God. Well, and finally, what else? What else? Well, in all things, everything, we can give thanks. You see, believers can give thanks in all things, regardless of the conditions that we find ourselves in, for the basis of our thanksgiving is not in ourselves or some formulation, but in God himself and what he has done for the world in Christ Jesus. He is the God who triumphs in spite of human evil. He has redeemed his people, sent his spirit, and safeguarded our future with himself beyond death. You remember, don't you? Paul says in chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we will live together with him. And then Paul adds an additional motivation for this thankfulness. He says this, that this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. It is his will, it pleases him, and it fulfills his good plans that we worship and acknowledge him, not because God is selfish, but because it makes us whole. When we do that, when we're thankful, and we praise him, and we worship and acknowledge him, it makes us whole. So this Thursday, and every day in between this Thanksgiving and the next, be joyful be a joyful people of God pray and in all things be thankful focus on the presence of God in our lives pass on God's blessings and in all things be thankful oh family of God this day this coming Thursday and in every day between may we be a thankful people as we gather and as we scatter in Jesus name amen stand with me would you father we thank you for your word And Lord, we can find much to be thankful for today. We can certainly find problems in our world that need, that need a, a hand, that, that need uh, good people to do good things. But Lord, on this day, as we prepare for a great day on Thursday with our families and friends, Lord, would you make us a thankful and a grateful people. May we not return evil for evil, but pray for those that need you so desperately. Thank you for these, your people, as we've gathered together. Keep us safe in this time of craziness, Lord. As we walk from here, may we be joyful in your presence, a thankful people in Jesus' name. Amen.